So today I want to talk about a really good strategy in life, in investing, how to make money, and just in life in general that is going to help you to become a lot more successful, to get better results than most people get. And I'm going to talk about why working your regular job, doing the regular nine to five and all that, and the regular investing that most people do that's stable and secure, why that's just going to get you average to mediocre results and how to break out of that. There's a concept that I came across that I tend to weigh heavily in my life called unbounded upside. When I look at opportunities in life, not just in investing, but in life in general, I look for opportunities that have an unbounded upside, but have a bounded or capped downside. It means that there's a fixed amount that you stand to lose, but there's not a fixed amount that you stand to gain. So let's say you're working a regular nine to five job. The worst that could happen to you is that you get fired. And then in most cases for many jobs, you're gonna get a severance, okay? And you're gonna get unemployment and you're gonna get you know some kind of notice. So really the downside of working a regular job is almost nothing. In fact, it might actually be positive. There's plenty of guys I know that I've been coaching that have gotten laid off and then they got a large severance package. So they actually benefited because they gained more money by losing their job. This happens pretty often. So the downside is bounded and it's really not very bad. But then you look at the upside on working the regular nine to five job and it is very bounded as well, right? Whatever your salary is, you might have some bonuses or something like that, but you're not going to make a lot more than that. And even if you climb the corporate ladder and you get promotions and raises, it's still not going to be a ridiculous amount of money in most cases, right? You're not going to have some very large upside to that. So it's very stable. Okay. Compare this, for example, to being an entrepreneur, right? Starting your own business. Now, the downsides on some investments of being an entrepreneur are very high, right? So for example, let's say that you want to franchise a McDonald's or you you want to start your own store or restaurant, right? You're going to buy some real estate. You're going to hire some employees, whatever it is. You might spend a couple hundred thousand dollars investment, get a small business loan in order to do this, to start your dream business. And so the downside is pretty high because you could lose a lot of money and you could be losing money every month, having to pay payroll. So it's pretty much unbounded. Okay. Now the upside on actually a lot of these opportunities is bounded, unfortunately, right? So if you open up a restaurant, there's no possibility of you making millions of dollars a year from a restaurant, okay? Now there is a possibility of you starting a chain of restaurants, but you'd have to open up new stores, right? So it's kind of weird that some people choose those opportunities today as an investment or you know a job, what they're gonna do. But now let's contrast that to, let's say an online business, right? Say like this business, like YouTube, Bulldog Mindset, Simple Programmer, the kind of businesses I run and that I help my coaching clients to be able to run. By the way, if you're interested in coaching, there's a link down below. I do accept a limited number of coaching clients. I've been pretty much full, but I, I am taking more. I might expand that a little bit. So there's an application you have to fill out and it's, a, it's somewhat of a lengthy process, but if you feel like you want some help in this area, definitely, you know, check that out. So, but let's take that example, right? Let's take the example of what I help with a lot of my coaching clients of building a business like the business that I have. Now, the downsides are very, very small, right? So as far as the money that I've put into either of my businesses, it's almost nothing, right? It's only money that come from the business. It's basically almost completely nothing, right? Maybe a few hundred dollars really to, to get started. You think about it, you can get started. In fact, if you want to get started with, with a business like this, let me just bring up a resource for you because I get asked this all the time. It's also in the Bulldog Mindset membership. If you haven't joined, click the link down below and you can get uh, access to a lot more resources than this. But if you go to bulldogmindset.com, if you just scroll down to the bottom, starting a business resources, you can find all of this stuff here that I utilize, right? So let, let's talk about the startup cost of this, right? A Bluehost, okay, you set up a website. It's like basically $2 a month or $3 a month, okay? You could pay in the year, maybe $80, $100, whatever it is, you know, invest in maybe some 
the theme for it, right? Some email software, stuff like that. So maybe you might invest like 500 to $1,000, a logo, you know, off of Fiverr and stuff like that, all right? So let's say that you invest $1,000, okay? That's all that you stand to lose. You stand to lose some of your time, sure, that's fine, but that's not as big of a deal, especially if you're doing it as a part-time. But the upside is quite unbounded, why? Well, when you have a restaurant, only so many people can go in that restaurant. If you max out your seating for every night of the week and you raise your prices to X amount, that th this is the amount that you can make. But with the website, for example, you know, let's, let's take Bulldog Mindset, right? I have the membership program. You know, again, you can click the link down below to join, but $7 for the first month, okay? And then it's $40 a month afterwards, okay? So I've got maybe 900, 1,000 members in there right now, right? So you can calculate the, the amount that is, but there's no reason why I couldn't have 10,000 or 15,000 or 50,000 members in there. There's plenty of men out there. There's plenty of people that could be potentially my audience. So that upside is ridiculous, right? I could be making millions of dollars per year off of that business just by increasing the traffic. If my YouTube channel blew up or Instagram or my TikTok just got banned, but you can see that if I gained an audience that's 10 times as big as what I have, then my business would be 10 times as big and there's nothing to stop that. So that's an unbounded upside, right? And that's what we're looking for, right? The downside is bounded, the upside is not bound. So you can really apply this logic again to so many things in life, right? You wanna make sure that you choose the things where the gains are not limited. The same thing we could look at invest right if we talk about investing right most people invest in you know mutual funds s p 500 stock what all this they're looking for compounded interest it's dumb why because it's a bounded upside okay it doesn't matter how like lucky you get in the stock market as far as investing in like an index fund or something like that which is not a bad thing to do don't get me wrong but you're not gonna get rich. You're never gonna get outsized returns, okay? On average, it's gonna be a 7.5% return, let's say, at, at best, all right? Some years, maybe you get a 15 or 20% return. That, that's still not a lot, right? Because some years, you're gonna lose some percentage of that. So you know already going into that that you're not going to strike it rich, okay? It's, it's just not gonna happen. And so investing in those kind of vehicles, it just, it doesn't make sense. It's dumb, in my opinion. It, you can do much better than that by picking instead an investment vehicle that has an unbounded upside, right? So example of this, and this is actually not a great example of this because it's not truly an investment. If you want to listen to a really good strategy on this, what I'm about to tell you kind of that basically tampers what I'm about to tell you, there is a really good book. I believe Nicholas uh, Taleb's book the Black Swan, I think that is the one where he talks about this. It might be one of his other books, it might be an anti-fragile, but he talks about the barbell technique, which is basically this idea of having, you know, 90% of your allocation into a stable investment and 10% into a risky, high return, unbounded upside investment, right? I'm not sure if I completely agree with those ratios because it is possible to have all unbounded upside investments, which is even better. But let's just look at an example of one thing, and I'm not gonna necessarily call this an investment, but it's somewhere to allocate your money, more of a speculation. Those are going to more have the unbounded upside. But let's take crypto, right? So again, you know, a lot of people think I'm a hater on crypto. I have a lot of crypto, but I'm not a hater on it. I just, I don't like to see people putting everything into it and expecting that it's going to go up. It doesn't necessarily have to go up, okay? But it does qualify as something that has an unbounded upside and it has a bounded downside, right? Because let's say that you put some money into crypto the most you can lose is the money that you put in there, okay? Now, the most you can gain is, who knows? It could be a thousand times what you invest. It could be 10,000 times what you invest, right? Historically, we could look at that. So there's no bounded upside on that. Now, the downside risk is high, but it is maximized to what you invest. And so that's why it's a good idea to have some kind of crypto allocation in your portfolio, but not all of it because it is high risk, but the risk is bounded, okay? It's not like shorting a stock where or a naked short you know, contract on the stock where it's a completely unbounded downside. There are some things in life that have completely unbounded downside. So that's why you have to be smart enough to realize that when you take an unbounded upside type of risk, it is a speculation. It's sort of like a lottery ticket. It has enough of a probability of giving you enough of a return that will maximize that. There's this concept called, you know, in mathematics and probability called expected value. 
okay? Expected value, we use this in poker a lot as well, EV. It's essentially a way of determining that if you do an action so many times, what is the value of that action over time? So for example, you have a coin that you flip that's heads or tails, the 50-50, one out of two chance of landing on, let's say heads, okay? If I say, if you flip this coin, okay, and you call it correctly, for every time you get it correctly, I will pay you $2, okay? And every time that you get it wrong, you'll have to pay me $1, okay? You, your EV, your expected value on that coin flip is $1. Every time you expect to make $1. Now, you could flip the coin three times in a row and lose $3, but if you do it enough times on average, let's say you do it 10,000 times, there's like a 99.9% .9 chance that the exact amount of money that you will have at the end of 10,000 times is $10,000, okay? So as you have a, a large number of trials, then the EV approaches the limit, is essentially. It's a limit function, okay? So without the technical jargon and the mathematics, what that essentially means is that we can calculate things based on that. So crypto is probably one of those things where it has a very high EV, right? Now, the, the problem with high EV things is that you have volatility, right? If you had 50,000 opportunities to invest in crypto, then over that long term, you would probably net up a positive. But at any given time, if you put your money into crypto, you could lose some money. So that's why you have to have the mindset that whatever you're investing in it or putting into it, you can lose it all and you're willing to lose it all. And then now your downside becomes bounded because you're willing to lose it all, whatever you put in, but your upside is unbounded, right? So there's a lot of different opportunities like that. Real estate is another example of that, okay? When you invest in real estate, at least the way that I do it, with a 30 year fixed mortgage on a property, and I know that the rents can cover the mortgage and all that, then I know that that property is at least neutral is from a cash flow perspective or slightly positive. And so I know that no matter what happens, I'm not going to lose more money than my initial investment, which is pretty safe as well, because what's going to happen to that initial investment. It's going to be equity in the property, okay? But I know that the upside is to a degree unbounded, right? Because I, over a long period of time, that value can go up and, and continue to go up. Now, real estate all is, is sort of in the middle in the sense that it's not going to skyrocket, but it is unbounded to a greater degree. It can continue to go up and, and continue to go up and the rents go up and, and, and such, right? Another example just in life, right, would be like cold approach, right? When I tell you guys, Guys about dating and why you should go out as a man in, in cold approach. And the reason why is because it's an unbounded upside. There's no downside. There's literally no downside. There's no risk at all. The only risk is embarrassment or a, a, a slap to your ego, but your upside is very high, right? There's a, a lot of upside to that. And so when people say, oh, the juice isn't worth the squeeze or it's not worth, the, there's literally nothing that you're losing, but you do have an upside, right? Advisory positions. You know, I've done this with, with several companies. I'm on the board of, of several different companies where I'm an advisor and I have percentage of equity in that company, but I didn't have to pay anything for that equity. I'm obviously volunteering my time and my expertise, but there's no downside because there's nothing really to risk there, right? It's only an upside. And with a startup company, it's, it's more likely that that's going to fail. But if I do that for enough companies, then you, you can see that that upside is, is ridiculously high. The same thing that angel investors or investment firms, business bankers do when they invest in multiple startups, right? If you invest in one startup, you have a very, very high risk, right? The upside is unbounded. Of course, the downside is bounded, but there's a very high volatility and risk to that. But if you can spread out that volatility, if you invest in, let's say 10 different startups, okay? If you had a million dollars, you put a hundred thousand dollars in each one, then you're downside is still a, is a million dollars of risk, but your upside is unbounded in each one of those investments. And even though nine of them might fail, one of them could turn your million dollars into a hundred million dollars, right? And that's the whole idea or turn your hundred thousand dollars into a hundred million dollars, right? That's a, a high possibility, all right? Uh, another one would be publishing a book, right? So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys the the framework for a lot of the decisions I make in life. I try to always think about what is the downside and, and how can I find opportunities where there is literally no downside or very little downside or that downside is very, very fixed, but the upside is unlimited. And if you think about this again, one last thing I'll say, one of the key things that you have to realize about this, again, coming back to that idea of expected value is that if you live your life this way and you continually look for opportunities where there is a limited downside, but there's an unbounded upside, eventually you're gonna hit the lottery. 
Okay. And so if you look at every single rich person, every successful person, millionaire, right, including myself, you'll find that we got lucky. It's true. You do need luck. You cannot become rich without luck. Okay. But here's the thing about it is that you have to create all these opportunities. For example, here's a good last one and then we'll wrap this up. Okay. Is playing the lottery a good idea or not? It depends, right? So most people would say lottery is a tax on people who are weak at math. True, okay? Except if you had a large amount of money to buy lottery tickets with, you could have a very high return on the lottery, okay? Why? Because you need enough tickets in order to win that. And so imagine though, if you could get a huge amount of lottery tickets, okay, and you could get them for free or next to nothing or a very, very high discount, okay? In that case, eventually you're going to win the lottery. Eventually you're going to win and you're gonna you're gonna win big, right? So it's the same thing in life as it's like, if you keep on getting lottery tickets that are free, eventually you're going to hit the jackpot on one of those and and do really well. And that's, you know, the strategy that I've employed in life is that once I figured this out and I quit my regular job and stopped doing that and started putting lottery tickets into real estate investments, putting lottery tickets into businesses and then different ventures in those businesses, right? So many different things I've tried in business, in, in investing that all gave me these bounded downsides, but an unbounded upside. So one or two of those things hit, right? I did courses for this company, Pluralsight. And again, there was no downside to that, but it had this unbounded upside and that made me millions of dollars, right? And then I did wrote books, right? Which I published out there. And again, a couple million dollar opportunity because that got, I got lucky that those books got traction, but I kept on doing those things that gave me those opportunities. And I could name a, a bunch of different things where I got lucky essentially, but I created as many opportunities as possible. So the big secret to all this and what you can take away from this whole video is create opportunities where there's a bounded downside, but there's an unbounded upside. And the more of those you create, the more chances of you hitting the lottery, which is what you ultimately need to do. It's staying alive long enough and having enough, you know, up at bats to finally hit a home run, right? You gotta get up bat a lot of times to hit the home run. And so this is the whole, whole idea behind this. If you live your life like this, you're gonna find that eventually you're gonna find that that huge success.